Yeah, are school. you part of university? Yeah. They oh. absolutely, yeah. Oh. Absolutely. No doubt. Can you tell the fans what 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 university is? Because I, well, you know, university was when Chucky did Janet Jackson Rhythm Nation tour. He opened up. It was him, and then he his band. He just called his band University. Oh. Uh, that's what the name of the band was. And his theory behind university was he wanted to just take people to school on the funk. Oh. So he called the band University. That's when he had Derek Oregon, Thomas Oregon, Rex Silas, uh, Dave Barry, myself, uh, Tim Bali, Tim Cornwell. And just So that same band, um, today we have to rebuild the band. So it's different members. Okay. Uh, only original members right now is just myself, Tommy O. And Chucky. So we're calling the University 2.0. Oh, right. that's why it's a 2.0. Okay. Yeah, so Chucky's coming back with University 2.0. Still very funky. We just did Yoshi's 9 11, and that's the first time we had played in 30 years. <laughs> but we have another show coming up March 3rd, uh, 2023, in Sacramento, March 3rd, that we're, that we're preparing for right now. So I'm excited, man, because it gives me a chance to play again. So I'm trying to get myself back in shape and get ready to get ready to do it, you know. So and then we're doing, we got shows in April. We got shows in in Inglewood for Nam Week. We're gonna be playing out there, and we got like the following day we'll be playing in San Diego. So we're excited about it. So just as we wrap up, I mean, it, 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 you know, I have to thank you for your story and your journey because it's it's been really fascinating. What is it that I think the question I had was about. Being a producer in 2023 isn't the same as in the 90s where you're, you're getting money like that. Um, actually, it's almost so, you know, people are producing at home on their laptops and getting beats. So what's the balance between making music yeah, that you, doesn't you, get paid? Man, you, 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 you're asking some amazing questions. This is why I don't mind the time because you you, you ask great questions because you're right. Um, everything has changed. You know, you know, back in that time, I mean, producers were, you know, 50, 60, 75, 100, 125 thousand dollars a track, mm -hmm. you know, back in the, well, from what I know, the, the early 90s on yeah. up you know, to the early 2000s. Um, it's changed. Well, simply because everything, uh, you know, record companies has changed. The way we buy music has changed. Labels have changed. Mm -hmm. Companies have downsized. Studios have downsized. You can cut a record right now in your in your in your in your backyard or in your bathroom or in your iPhone. So they know that you can't go in there asking for these <laughs> six figure seven figure budgets no more. You can't you can't justify that no more. Plus, the budgets don't make sense for the type of they lost a lot. They lose they lost lost a lot of money giving away these budgets and records aren't selling. So mm -hmm. the record companies got smarter. And things just kind of like really, really downsized. So yeah, for a lot of producers. So what producers are doing now, they're doing like, they're bartering. Let me do two for one. If I do this, give me the first single. They're making different kind of deals. You know, so yeah, the money has changed. Um, uh, the production, the producer's fees have seriously changed. Mm -hmm. um, um, because you can't really justify, you know, and not for everybody, not for every judge, it's for most <laughs> oh, I, and I'm one in the most. Okay, <laughs> so I know there's a different level for like Timberland and, and the Neptunes and Babyface. Well, there's different levels. There are different levels, man. But uh, I'm thankful because I do have like working with artists who still have record deals. So a lot of artists don't even have record deals right now. Mm. So a lot of artists are, you know, self investing. It's got investors are financing their own projects and mm. you know negotiating deals and you know especially now. Producers, you can go to YouTube and buy a beat for a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, people buying beat, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying so it, it, it didn't change. So it, it definitely has the production thing has definitely changed. Streaming has changed. The way we buy records has changed. Everybody's catalog has changed. Um so then why of, are you doing it now then? Is it for I don't, I don't if, do it for money at all? Okay. I don't do it, I've never been in the business for money. Um you know, never ever really been in the in the business for money. I've been in, I'm in this business because I love it, and right now, um, to be honest with you, I've, I've pretty much done everything that I that I want to do. There's some things that's that that's that I'm stirring up now that I'm praying that will you know that 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 if this God's will 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 happen, 
And even if it doesn't, man, bro, I'm living a greedy life right now, man. <laughs> Just, you know, I, I don't never, I, w- I wouldn't care if I don't never go to Europe again or, or travel ever again. Because I hate, I hate, I'm terrified of flying all my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mr. T in A team. <laughs> hate flying all my life. So if I don't ever have to take another airplane trip or whatever, I'm cool. Um, <laughs> at my or at my early, you know, at my, at my age, I've done a lot, yeah. and uh, pretty much, yeah, I, I had small goals when I came in this business. I uh, only had two, and those goals were very, very small. And um, so right now, um, there's some things that right, you know, that. That like I said, that I'm working on, and if it, if it manifests, it'll be great, and it will be probably like my the journey on my way out. Um, so I'm doing it because I love it. Yeah. Uh, like I said, man, I work with a lot of independent artists, even local artists, you know, local managers. Um, I work with a lot of unsigned artists. I, you know, so it's not like, you know, um, um, I'm, I, you know, yes, you have to make a living and you have to take care of yourself and all that. But things are way different when it comes down to the business side of it. You have to find things, you have to find things and you have to make, be on, uh, I tell producers all the time, you know, get, get, get a community of where people want to work with you and want to hire you, want to use you, get a, get a, get a, um, a, a group of people, get a group of clients, man, that will, you know, that will pay you to come and produce a record on. They may be a school teacher. They may be a principal. They may be a doctors. They may be doing it for a hobby, but, Get somebody that can pay you that money for your tracks or whatever that you can use and establish that. And mm-hmm. if you're good, if you're good, you can you can make a cool living doing it. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that I, there are two questions people say who listen to this full interview say, "What does the DOA stand for?" and "What happened to <laughs> Flip?" So those are the two questions people might ask. So <laughs> you want to uh, answer both of them? Well, the DOA definitely doesn't stand for for Derek Allen. People think is my my name is Derek Oliver Allen, <laughs> Derek or Renthal. I've been even called Renthal Allen. <laughs> you know, Derek, whoever, old old old, 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 old Allen. I don't know. This <laughs> with these crazy names. But my middle name is Lewis. So DOA came from Chucky Booker. Chucky Booker gave me that name. I showed up at a studio one day. I played on a track, and he says, he says, "Yo, dude," he says. Your name is going to be DOA, and this is what it stands for. He says, "I don't want you telling nobody what it means." I said, "Wow." He said, "Really, man? You don't even. This is what it means. You want me to tell him?" He says, "Man, don't tell nobody." So I'm like, "Okay, I didn't know if I if I liked it or not." But after after a while, I'm like, "Chucky Booker gave me a name, and <laughs> I, I'm juice, right?" So what I go do a few weeks later, I go buy me a little trucker's hat, and I go get. It's you know some letters put on it, and I hold have the whole definition of the name going across the hat, right? Because uh, I'm not thinking I for, forgot what he said. I'm <laughs> so I'm rocking his hat. So now certain people are saying, "Oh, well, that's what DOA is." I'm like, "Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah this came from Chucky Booker." So I never forget. I saw Chucky. He saw my hat. He said, "Dude, what are you doing?" I said, "What's up, man?" He said, "What's up with that hat?" I said, "You, you like it? It's funky, huh?" He said, man, give me that hat. He started crushing it. I said, man, what I tell you? I said, oh, no, nah, man. <laughs> I said, dude, I just got excited. So some people know what DOA stands for, but I never tell nobody unless they get it, man. It's just something that <laughs> a lot of people have been wondering for years what it's thing. It definitely is not deaf on arrival or deaf dead on arrival or whatever it is. Right? <laughs> definitely not that. But um, it's like- What year thing- did you get it? What year did you get it? This was the year, man, um, before, I got it before the, when I did, I went down and played on the remix of Less, of That's My Honey. So this must have been 80, I want to say 88, no, 89, something like that, 88, 89. That's when he gave it to me, man. Wow. I said, bro, I will not tell nobody. So <laughs> kind of keep it a mystery. People will definitely be wanting to know what it is. Few people know what it is. And I hope those of you who think you know what it is, don't be typing it down there <laughs> for tonight. I say y'all. But my best friend Flip is still around. Um, he's not playing anymore. He ended up injuring his hand. Oh. With Bobby Brown getting ready for the Bobby tour. He injured his hand. And he was never able to, to come back and play drums again. 
Wow. So, what he did, so what he did was he started a nonprofit. He has a program called Mink, Musical Instruments in Kids' Hands. And what he's what he's done was was helping to put musical programs back in schools. And what he did was he took a big old U-Haul man and he tricked a U-Haul out and built this amazing studio. So it's mobile on wheels. And what he does, he takes his studio to low income, low privilege areas wow. to give kids music lessons, um, production lessons. He has different uh, uh, workstations in the studio to where if somebody wanted to guitar lesson, well, he got, you know, he got Bobby G on there. He got some of the world's greatest guitars. If they want a bass lesson, they can pull up DOA. They can pull up whoever. They can pull up John Paris. They can pull up as a drum lesson. And these kids, and he takes it to the prisons as well. So he's doing extremely well with his program. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty. It's, but he, he, he's not able to. He's play. not playing drums no more. He, he can sit down and play, but not like, not intensely. But now his son, his name's Kid Frost. K Frost is absolutely phenomenal just just a wizard on drums mm -hmm. but flips flips career ended right there but mm -hmm. he still took it and bringing people joy and blessing people and doing something absolutely amazing you know do you guys ever re re reminisce about the, the, talk two, all the time. two <laughs> talk all the time man we talk about everything from quartet you know from kids we talk yeah. we stories knee high man we, we we talk all the time yeah what about the kid from um the, the white kid from Orange County, yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's his. His name was uh, uh, man. What's his name? Uh, Perkins is his last name. Uh, I can't think of his first name. But if there's anybody I would love to find, would be him. Oh, Ed. <laughs> his name is Ed Perkins. If there's anybody that I, yeah, I would love to find him and his family, just so I can thank him. Now we are in touch. With the lady that lived in Redondo, okay. and I, owe, I definitely owe her a phone call. Her kids are grown now, but these people, man, were staples in our lives, man. Yeah. You know, I don't forget them, man. I really don't. People like O'Brien, staple in my life, man. Um, Elder Barge, Chucky, Michael Norfleet, Bruce Sterling, you know, Karen White. These people were staples in my life, man. That I just they'll be my life forever, man. Just family forever. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of the Half Time Chat community. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Um, but most importantly, why don't you consider being a member as a way of supporting the channel, but also getting a lot of videos ahead of time, a lot of behind the scenes stuff, and some exclusive content that doesn't get shared. But anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for being part of Half Time Chat. Yeah.